Hey guys, welcome to Phantom Sage Powers, where we discuss heroes, villains, and eldritch gods. Today, we're diving deep into the dark, twisted world of one of the most powerful and terrifying villains in the Marvel Universe, Null, the King in Black. If you thought Venom and Carnage were bad news, just wait till you get a load of the guy who created them. This dude is on a whole nother level. But who or what exactly is Null? And why does he play such a massive role in the Marvel Universe? Let's unravel this cosmic horror and see why the King in Black is such a universal threat. Null isn't just any villain. He's been around since before the universe was created. Well, this universe. He's a primordial god of darkness who existed in the void between the destruction of the sixth cosmos and the creation of the seventh. Yeah, we're talking ancient eldritch levels of power here. So, Noel was just chilling, just enjoying the darkness of oblivion. You know, like when you have some really thick blackout curtains and can't tell if it's day or night in your room. But then the celestials, those big rock'em sock'em robot looking cosmic beings, mm -hmm, they rolled through his neighborhood and started turning on lights, which kind of pissed Noel off. But they offered Noel a job, a big one actually. They wanted him to be the king in black, to watch over their creations. But Noel, he wasn't interested. Instead, he created the all-black necro sword, pulled it right out of his own shadow, and straight up decapitated one of the celestials, and declared war on the light of creation itself. <laughs> I mean, this guy was born to be a villain. He killed several hundred other godlike beings and celestials before he was finally defeated, cast onto some unnamed planet, where a strange fellow named Gore would find his weapon, the all black necro sword, and use it to continue his own bloody crusade against the gods. When Null finally got himself together, he began experimenting with his powers and strengthened them. He had the power to control something called the Living Abyss which is literally a manifestation of the dark void out of which he was born. He discovered he could actually create life out of this. And if that wasn't enough, Noel used the severed head of the celestial he killed to forge symbiotes. Yes, those symbiotes, like Venom and Carnage. Noel is basically their god, source of all of that alien, gooey chaos we love to see. And through this process, he inadvertently gave the symbiotes their weakness to fire and high-frequency sounds. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Null didn't just stop with creating symbiotes. He formed an army, spreading darkness across the universe. So how did this dark god go from being banished to nearly conquering all of creation? Stick with me. We're about to dive into Null's warpath and how it led him straight to Earth. Now that we understand where Noel came from, let's talk about what makes him so dangerous. This guy is not your typical villain. Noel has control over something called the Living Abyss, which is basically cosmic darkness. He can create, control, and manipulate this dark matter to form symbiotes and wipe out entire civilizations. Venom, Carnage, and the entire symbiote race, they all come from Null. He created the symbiote hive and controlled them through a hive mind. For eons, these symbiotes were out there conquering worlds for him. But here's where it gets interesting. The symbiotes turned on Null. They rebelled, trapped them on a planet made of symbiotes a prison, Clintar. You know that place Venom calls home? It's not really a home. It's a cage for Null. Fast forward a few thousand years, and who accidentally wakes him up? Our boy, Eddie Brock, AKA Venom. And once Null is free, oh, he's not just out for revenge. He's out to reclaim his place as the ruler of all symbiotes and bring the entire universe back into darkness. But here's the big question. What happens when Null finally comes face to face with Earth's mightiest heroes? How do Thor, the Avengers, and even Venom himself stand up to the King in Black? The stakes are cosmic, and the battle is about to begin. 
Stick around, the real fight is coming up. Thousands of years before Noel would come to Earth, he sent out these symbiote dragons across the universe to destroy civilizations. When one came to Earth during medieval times, it was nearly successful, but a young Thor would intervene and strike down this dragon symbiote. Because Noel was actually remote piloting this specific dragon, Noel's influence over the Clintars was severed by Thor's divine lightning, severely weakening him. The other symbiote dragons that were out in the universe were free and split into hundreds of smaller symbiotes. They had experienced things like heroism and honor and bravery, those positive aspects that Null had shielded them from. And that's when they realized just how much Null sucked. So they trapped them in a cage of themselves. The dragon that Thor defeated was called Grendel and its body fell into the ocean to be discovered thousands of years later by S.H.I.E.L.D. And you already know how this goes. Nick Fury was part of a special program during the Vietnam War to use pieces of this Grendel symbiote to create super soldiers. This program was called the Sim Soldier Program. Null sensed these symbiotes bonding to their new host, and this began to stir him. Some of the symbiote soldiers actually started to wile out and Nick Fury had to put them down. Years later, Eddie Brock unknowingly freed the dragon Grendel, and it battled Eddie and Spider-Man. The dragon also began searching for a piece of itself that had separated and was able to fight Null's influence. This piece was called Rex. However, Venom merged with Rex first and eventually trapped and killed Grendel. During this time, Cletus Cassidy, AKA Carnage, was already dead. But another symbiote possessed human called Scorn joined a cult worshiping Null and they stole Grendel's codex. A codex is like an imprint of the knowledge and skills of a host and a symbiote, almost like a backup drive. And after retrieving Grendel's codex, Scorn and this cult stole Cletus Cassidy's deceased body and implanted Grendel's codex inside Cletus. Carnage and Grendel merged, becoming godlike. And Carnage was immediately able to contact Null. So he decides he's going to free him by collecting every codex of every host who had at some point bonded with symbiotes which would overload the symbiote hive mind. During the Absolute Carnage storyline, Carnage grew so strong, he became Dark Carnage. And he tricked Eddie Brock into killing him after claiming the remaining codices. This is what finally gave Null the power to break free of his cage. He promptly destroyed Clintar, manifesting a suit of draconic armor, gathering all the symbiotes and reforming them into a fleet of symbiote dragons. So, Null's free and is coming straight for Earth. But he's not alone. He's got an entire army of symbiote dragons under his control. You know that symbol that's across his chest? That looks a lot like the symbol on Peter Parker's Venom suit when he first got it? Well, the original symbol is actually a dragon. And to make matters worse, Null isn't just controlling the symbiotes. He's possessing two Celestials. That's right. Null has literal cosmic gods at his command. Captain America and the Avengers were ready to fight. But Null, he was wiping the floor with them. Even the Sentry. Yeah, the guy who ripped Carnage in half once tried to stop Null by taking him into space. But Null flipped the script 
and ripped him in half instead. And when the sentry's dark passenger, the Void, began to emerge, Noel just absorbed him, downed him like a spritzer. Old boy is a monster. But Noel had bigger plans. His target wasn't just Earth. It was Eddie Brock's son, Dylan. Dylan's got symbiote-related powers that Noel could use to either destroy or dominate the universe. So naturally, Noel is coming for him. So how did our heroes even stand a chance against Noel? And what role did Eddie Brock play in saving the world from the King in Black? And how does a being like Noel even get defeated? Let's just say the final battle is epic. Buckle up for the cosmic showdown of the century. As Noel is closing in on Dylan, Earth's heroes are throwing everything they've got at him. Thor, X-Men, Doctor Strange. It's an all hands on deck type of situation. But it's still not enough to stop Noel's rampage. Then the game changes. The God of Light, the Enigma Force, chooses Eddie Brock to be its new host. That's right. Venom becomes Captain Universe. Now that's a power upgrade. Eddie wields the full force of cosmic energy, and in one of the most iconic moments in Marvel history, he combines Thor's hammer Mjolnir with Silver Surfer's surfboard to create a massive battle axe. With this new weapon, Eddie beheads one of Noel's symbiote-possessed celestials. And the final showdown, Eddie takes Noel into space, drags him into the sun, and uses the unipower to vaporize him. And just like that, Noel is gone. Or is he? But there's also a twist. Eddie Brock is now the new king in black. He controls the symbiotes, but without Noel's dark influence. It's a whole new chapter for the symbiotes and Eddie. So that's the story of Noel, the King in Black. From God of Darkness hell-bent on destroying the universe to his final defeat at the hands of Venom. So the thing I really liked about Noel and his story was how pure of a villain he is. There's no redeeming qualities. There's no sympathy that you can find in him at all which also serves to recontextualize the symbiotes and Venom especially. His existence and his relationship to the Clintars justifies Venom's complete arc from villain to anti-hero to full-on hero, because the reason why the Clintars initially rebelled against Noel was because of Thor. Thor defeating Grendel in medieval times and severing Noel's control over those dragons was the beginning, and that exposed them to feats of heroism. Those symbiotes spread across the universe and found other noble protectors and bonded with them and became what they called symbiote knights. And although, due to their origin, they still possessed a great deal of darkness, they ultimately sought to achieve a pure symbiosis with their host and their culture and become a champion. When Peter Parker encounters Venom and had his stint in black, again those qualities of a hero were imprinted in Venom's codex which later would pass on to Eddie Brock, although these two had a very complicated relationship that took some time for this goodness to manifest. <laughs> Null is one of these examples of a perfect retcon that serves to honor what we've already known about the characters like Venom and Carnage and Spider-Man while simultaneously deepening the lore of the entire universe. Very well done. As for Null's appearance in the third installment of the Venom franchise, Venom The Last Dance, I will reserve my criticism until after I've seen the movie. But given the lack of access to the other Marvel characters outside the Spider-Verse, it's safe to say we won't get anything close to the epic tale that unfolded in the pages of the comics. Not to mention, Sony hasn't had the best track record of handling these characters. But we'll just have to wait and see. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and join the crew. And I'll see you in the next issue.